This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight. I was just told by Bubs that I didn't have my high energy on our last get together. Do I sound more energetic now? Yeah, now you're on fire. Oh, I'm now I'm exhausted. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, We're talking to Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen, who, in the last uh, time we talked to him, was supposed to have a um, uh, hernia operation Mm -hmm. the next day. All right. Now, right. this isn't the next day. We're recording this at the same time we recorded that. But so people won't be disappointed. Let's do two versions of this. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Bubs, how did your how did your hernia operation go? I'm still in terrible pain. <laughs> really? <laughs> and a version two will be, uh, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. And version two is it didn't, although well, we haven't gotten to that. Okay, now take two. Uh, uh, Bubs, I know you had your, we're supposed to have your hernia operation. What happened? Uh, I can't move. No, 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 that's the last version. This is the take where you go, uh, they didn't do it. They called it off. They took somebody that had a gunshot wound. I didn't get it done. <laughs> well, let's face it. I mean, a hernia, unless it's strangulated, isn't, you know, it's not going to kill you. So you're in the back of the line. Yeah. You know. Have you ever had any real medical problems? Well, I had a hernia. Eh, leave us alone, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, I, you know, I, 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 uh, I, um, you know, it's. Uh, I should probably ha- have it too, uh, but it's not bad enough. I think if I went to a doctor and I said uh, I've got a hernia, and they've all noticed I have a hernia, they always are happy to point it out. Do you, you know you have a hernia? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm sure of it. But, it, but uh, they did a, a CT scan on me and they saw the hernia and they said it's no problem. You know, it's not. Yeah, if it's, it's not if it's not hurting you, uh, let it go. Yeah, I mean, occasionally I'll go through periods where it kind of acts up a little bit, but that's it. You know, it's nothing yeah. nothing terrible. But with you, it's real pain, right? Well, it, it comes and goes. Like I sometimes I'll have two weeks of nothing, and then uh, I had a couple of days last week where it's quite annoying. Well, you, well, you know what the problem is with me is if I get it, I get it, I uh, I get it when. Uh, a pain when my pants are too tight. Somehow that, that, would do it, yeah. that affects it. Yeah, yeah. So I don't wear pants anymore. You know, <laughs> hell, I never leave the house anyway. Do you leave the house a lot? Every day. And well, I, yeah, you, you tell me you stay in forever. Or something. You know why? You're in a, what, studio apartment? Yeah, so I, it's, uh, it's, like being in a jail cell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you want to get out? You got to. You, yeah. you can't stay in the house. Me, I've got twenty five hundred square feet here. Do I need to go out? See, if I had a big house and ca- like you and cable, I I probably would stay in many days. Yeah, yeah. There's no reason to go out. You no. know. Uh, well, because it's healthy for you to walk. Yeah, yeah. I know that. You know. So, what's your point? You know. Uh, you know, so I I, uh, uh, I just uh, I'm very very very. Do I sound? By the way, do I sound uh, more active now? Do I sound? You do. I yes. don't. Yes, because the last one I guess I was sounding like this, like an old man. You were sounding like me, yeah. Yeah, less sounding like you. So anyway, uh, let me see here. What what else is new in your life? What have you been doing? In other words, if you do go out, what do you do? You run. I run. Uh, sometimes I just like to drive. Uh, yeah, just like, I like to get out in the light. That's it's, that's why I hate winter so much. It's, yeah, 
yeah. the darkness, it's, which I loved as a kid, but as you get older, I think it reminds you of death. <laughs> yeah. Darkness looming over us. And right. Right. So, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm just wondering, uh, what, so you go out a lot. So what do, yeah. you do, what do you do when you're out? Do you do you have do you go to comedy clubs? Do you hang out at comedy clubs? Go to comedy club, yes. That's, uh, that's my favorite thing to do. So. What what's your comedy club of choice? It, huh? You got the Punchline, uh, Cobbs, uh, the place down in Sunnyvale. Roosters has been closed since the pandemic, which is supposed to reopen. That was a good place to hang out. The San Jose Improv. Now, why do you hang out there? You know, let me put it this way. And oh, the Throgmorton, which uh, in Mill Valley, your old town, which just reopened. You know, when I'm when I'm uh, when I've got time off, the last thing I would do in the old days is go hang out at a radio station. <laughs> so what? Well, made... comedy clubs usually have they'll have a comic I know coming in at town. I like to see old friends and that. Yeah, that's hang nice. That's nice. But there's another reason, isn't there? Yeah. Well, there's another reason, isn't there? Come on. <laughs> oh, the other reason. The, the other reason. The, the, the main reason why I'm sure you go to these clubs. Free food? <laughs> well, the, no, it's something else. The women. Uh, well, uh, that, when I was younger, absolutely, yeah. Uh, these days, no. Uh, in other words, you don't care about picking up women anymore? Not at all, no. Not at all. Nothing. I mean, not really? Sex drive is uh, virtually gone, so it's, which is actually good. So. Mine wasn't gone until my prostate operation. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mine, mine always stayed fairly active. Uh, and, um, uh, but, I mean, as I've gotten older, it's gotten less. Okay. You know. Uh, and uh, it's, you know, so, so that, that, uh, that. That's true, but I I just never uh, um, I never uh, uh, got rid of that that sex drive until this happened, and now it's like I even I, I even getting a sexual thought is kind of rare. Really? Wow. Yeah. I mean, you do get sexual thoughts still, don't you? Oh sure, and I, I absolutely you know you see a beautiful woman, you go wow, that's really nice, but. Uh, that's about it. I mean, you know what I do now with women when I see them on television? It isn't, boy, she's sexy. It's, she's very pretty. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. It's changed. The whole dynamic has changed. Uh -huh. It's now an aesthetic thing rather than a sexual thing. You know? So, um, you know who I'm in love with? It's a 14-year-old girl. I have to say uh -oh. that. No, wait a minute. No, I'm not. No, it's not somebody I have access to. I watch YouTube a lot. Yeah, yeah, I like YouTube. YouTube is endless enjoyment for me. I can sit there. Uh, who looks into who I'm talking to, folks? But you, well, I, get, I see. I watch YouTube when I go to my uh, sisters, yeah. and uh, you can just. I will say, there's a uh, boy. There are some bad. There's nothing worse than a bad quality video. Well, yeah, but there's nothing better than a good quality video that has stuff you know that has some real uh balls to it but anyway there's this this girl she's 14 she's from the U from ukraine uh she's been doing this i think I, I can go back and find videos of her when she's 12 and 11 and she's working as a street busker busker being a musician who performs in the streets and performs for tips and things like that right Mm -hmm. And uh, she, I can't even remember her name right now. Hold on a second. I could probably find it for you. But a anyway, the point is that she, uh, uh, she's a terrific violinist. And she does a lot of these pop songs on the violin. And she dances at the same time. And she has just this adorable face. Okay? And guess what? She gets like five million views to her violin performances. So what kind of? So she's making good money off that. She's making some money off of it, sure, sure. I'm sure. I'm sure she probably goes and pays for the royalties for the music that she uses, which would be cheap in comparison to what she could make. But for about every million views you get, you get about four thousand dollars. 
So if she's got five million views on a video, she's just made uh, 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 twenty million, uh, twenty thousand dollars, and she's got twenty, thirty, forty, hundred, I don't know, different the videos up. And they've been up for years now as she's been working the streets as she's gotten older. And she, <laughs> in the Ukraine? <laughs> well, no, not in Ukraine. She the, she does this in L.A. L.A., okay. L.A. They moved to L.A., supposedly. I read a little biography on her, and they moved to L.A. And uh, she started playing the violin and is considered a prodigy. She's a very good violinist. It's not like she plays you know, mediocre violin. She really is a terrific violinist. And then she sings on some of these things, and she's a good singer too, but her violin thing is what really sells her. She's got millions upon millions of people. I think something like a total of 50 million people have watched her. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I wish I, I should try and look it up here, but I, I, I don't know what to what to say here. Let me see here. Do I have her at all uh, videos? Uh, uh, no, those are my videos. Okay, uh, I I don't uh, I don't uh, I don't know what her name is now. I'm trying to remember it, I don't have it, and I don't know where it is. So uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not uh, it's not. Uh, uh, I can't find her name right now, but I'll I'll let the audience know later on. But I mean, it's really she's really incredible. She's really incredible. Um, well, she has a real talent. I've heard someone told me there are like women that all hot women will go on like and wax a wash a car and they'll get like a hundred thousand. Oh years. yeah. Oh no. No. There's no question about that. You know. I mean, I, I I sit here. I'm lucky if I get a couple hundred people watching my videos, right? <laughs> And then I look at some woman, you know, who, as I say, is washing a car, and she's got five thousand, five million, you know. Yeah. And you're going, come on, you know, <laughs> what do I have to do to get arrested here, you know? I mean, this is ridiculous. I'll tell you what happened. This is really strange. I mean, I still don't get a lot, but I started doing a thing where once in a while, Marjorie and I go out and we go to the park. And I sit there, and we do a little show called the Marjorie and Alex Show. And uh, I, it's five minutes long. And we nothing goes on. We yell and scream at each other, argue, whatever. And then we put it up. And I get about a 1,000 views to that. What? Wow. It's a nothing show. I, the, the less I do, the more audience we get. There you go. Yeah. So... You know, when I see these people, there, there's like, you know, uh, there's there are people on uh, a, a good example. There's a girl on uh, on YouTube, I think, who gives makeup tips, and she gets like five million views per show. Five makeup, million, Jesus. Ma makeup tips. Wow. You know, I give makeup tips. My looks would belie that ability to do that. You know, because nobody would take me seriously. But my God, I mean, I, I I wonder about that. So I keep wondering about what could I do that people would want to watch, and I keep looking at these things. And here's five million for this person. I saw one that was like thirty five million views. I went for what? You know, they're doing nothing. Jesus. I and I I don't have big breasts. I'm working on it, but uh, you know, I don't have big breasts, and so I can't get them. But uh, it, it's, it, it, you know, I, I find YouTube endlessly entertaining. I can sit there for hours and start watching it. Before I know it, it's, you know, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Because uh, I watch a lot of the Letterman stuff, for instance, the old Letterman shows. Because they're really very funny, very good. Have they got all the old ones on there? Uh, yeah, 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 a lot of old ones. Um, but, um, you know. My question for you is, why don't we start a Bubs channel? <laughs> we can't even get you to do this on video, okay? I know. You know, that's how bad this is. Right. You know. Uh, I, I'm sorry, folks, but Bubs doesn't have the kind of throughput, the bandwidth that we need in order to be able to do video on this thing. So, 
Yeah, I need to. Uh, somebody wanted to, because in about four months, my car is going to hit 500,000 miles. So somebody thought uh, I should make a video of that. And uh, Do you have any way of shooting a video? I've got friends who could probably do it for me. Oh, I see. Okay. Because when you say I'm going to do a video of it, if you were any normal human being who had an iPhone, you wouldn't have to ask somebody to do it. You could just do it yourself. Yeah, well, I believe me, I could not figure out an iPhone. So how far sure. away are you from 5,000, 500,000? Uh, 7,000 miles. Oh, wow, you better start thinking about getting somebody to be there when it happens. Yeah. Like when you get down to a hundred, within 100 miles of that, I would make sure you've got your I's dotted and your T's crossed so that you can uh, you can videotape because I would love to see the turning of that to 500,000. Yeah, that would be kind of cool, right? Very few people see that. I know. But obviously a guy who has a dial-up and a flip phone <laughs> has got to have a car he didn't sell for the last 200 years. <laughs> How old is that car now? Uh, 22 years old. 22 years old. I think Shecky's car is 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 about the same age, maybe 25 years. And guess how many miles he has on it? I would guess Shecky drives very little. 60,000. Wow. Over 25 years, 60,000 miles. What kind of car is it? I can't remember now. I think it's a Toyota or it's a, know, it's one of those. A Honda. I, I don't know. I can't remember. I ride in it all the time. A couple of months ago, I was trying to get out of his car, and I pulled on the door handle inside, and it broke off in my hand. <laughs> Sounds like an American car. Well, well, I could feel guilty, but the car's 25 years old. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. The fatigue alone has caused that to happen. So now he can't figure out how he, he's going to have to get out all the time to open the, the door for people to get out. So I'm always Mr. Fix-It. I can always find a workaround for something. Like in our closets here in my apartment, there was no light. So I went out and got one of these motion sensor lights, you know, that you get for the front lawn. And I hung them in the in the uh, in the closets. Now all my closets light up when you open the door. I should do that. The uh, the entire socket fell out of my closet light. Yeah, you just go down to uh, I don't know. Go, I'd say go to Amazon, but you don't order from Amazon, do you? No, no. <laughs> Boy, you have missed out on. You've left. Uh, you're living in 1972. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, so where can I get these uh, these those little light? You just stick them on the wall. You, you right? could probably go to a hardware store; they might have them. You know, say they have these uh, these motion sensor lights, and I'm sure they have some. And are they uh, do they are they bright? Oh yeah, I have one that just lights up the whole closet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Tell me you want a nice bright one, and and. Uh, then you just mount it on the wall in your closet, and every time you open the door, because it's run by batteries, you open the door, the light goes on. Okay. Yeah, but that's my way of fixing things. So why was I talking about my way of, of fixing things? Because I had something that was going to be a fix for you. You're going you're gonna to fix the door handle. Oh, the door handle. Yeah, okay. So anyway, the door handle. So I'm thinking about it, and all of a sudden, I said, one day I call Shecky up and I say, I think I got a solution to the problem of the door because I feel very guilty because I was, I don't feel guilty about breaking it since, you know, it was ready to go, obviously. I said, but all somebody has to do is roll down the window and pull on the door handle on the outside. Right. Yeah. And, and since then, he's been having friends do that. You know, and then they just close the door behind them, and you can roll up the window, you know, push the mm -hmm. button that rolls up the window. So that was my way of solving the problem. So once again, Al Mr. Fix The it. problem solver. <laughs> the problem solver comes to... Uh, to <laughs> yeah. So what was the last gig you had? The last gig I had was uh, in Hawaii. Oh, yeah, you went to Hawaii. Yeah. You're opening up for that uh, uh, Felipe, yeah. Felipe, Felipe Esparza? Esparza. Yeah. Yes. 
Now, most people, if I say Felipe Esparza, they don't know who he is. In fact, I don't really know who he is. But if you're if you're in the uh, Spanish language community, this guy is big stuff, isn't he? Big stuff, and he's got he does have three specials on Netflix. Yeah, and does he do them in English, or are they in? He did he did one in Spanish, two in English. Yeah, yeah. Uh, does when he, when you work with him, does he work in Spanish or does he work in English? English. Oh, okay, because he wants to get a more general audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but uh, does he do some gigs that are just uh, for Hispanic people? I mean, just using... I think he did one a couple of years ago, but he's, if he does, he doesn't do very many of them. He's, and uh, I'm sure he wouldn't book you to open for him. No, although he said, he said if, I could, if I could learn Spanish, I would be huge in Mexico. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> well, all you got to learn is how to say... Um, um, <laughs> Um, hooker. Hooker. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do that material anymore, though, do you? <laughs> no, it's uh, you got to PC it for the, the for the times, you know. Yeah. You want to ruin your career tomorrow? Here's a good way to ruin your career. Do some anti-Jew jokes. <laughs> yeah. You, you know? <laughs> like Kanye. <laughs> yeah, like Kanye. Boy, I never saw a guy... Imagine, in a matter of two weeks, I think... He went from being worth two billion dollars to four hundred million. Now, I know. That, I can't. Hmm? I I knew he was like big, but I didn't know he was worth that much. That's incredible. Uh, and let me put it this way: he's made more money than any other human being on the planet that I never heard their music. You know, yeah. I never. I, can you name a tune by or a tune? A tune is, is that is what he does? Can they be described as tunes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, he must have sold a real ton of them, right? Oh, t- yeah. And then he's got the he's got the fashion line and things like that. That's what where he well, lost. Maybe that's where more of the money comes from. Then. Well, the he lost. Uh, he went down to the four hundred million from the two billion by losing all these endorsements that he had. All these companies that were taking his Yeezy shoes and Yeezy that and Yeezy that. You know, stuff. I think I said Yeezy that twice. That's how wiped out I am today. Do I? Well, that s- might be the biggest slip up since uh, remember Michael Richards and the- that that was minor. That was minor. <laughs> I mean, to begin with, Michael Richards wasn't worth, you know, two billion dollars. He didn't have right. two, He didn't have two billion dollars worth of gigs coming in. Let's put it that way. Okay. But it was kind of a career ender. Oh, it, 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 absolute career ender. Uh, I'm trying to think who else blew up their career that fast. Um, certainly Michael Richards did it overnight. But, you know, it wouldn't have happened overnight if we weren't living in a modern age where everybody's walking around with a video camera in their pocket. Because there wouldn't have been any video record of that. Yeah, he was caught on cell phone and that was like that was 06 that's how long ago that was you know and then he apologized for it but this is the age in which you cannot apologize your apology is just not accepted you know no someone said that we live in this age where it's it's very similar to the puritanical age where you do something wrong you're not forgiven you're fucked yeah but i mean uh, 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 worse than that uh, go back to the mccarthy era it's like the mccarthy era Simply yeah. by being accused of something ruins your career. I mean, Kevin. The accusation is worse than the crime. Kevin Spacey was accused. Okay, he hasn't worked since. However, on several occasions, Kevin Spacey has been considered not guilty. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you know why isn't he working? Uh, simply because he the 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 gay kid that he came on to that claimed that he had sex with Spacey, that whole case got thrown out of court. You know? So why isn't he working again? Because the the accusation is worse than if you... You may as well have done it, okay? Because... Yeah. And no amount of apology is going to turn the whole thing around. So, you know. So did I sound peppier today? Yeah. <laughs> huh? 
So if you get accused of something, don't apologize. Yes. It's not going to help. And before I started this, I was accused of being too slow on the last one, so I'm peppy now. (laughs) <laughs> hey, listen, I, uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen with your hernia, but I hope that everything is going to be okay. And let me know so I can send you my condolences and ask you how you are and get an answer on it. Well, okay? Kaiser, you might be sending me roses. So. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the lovely, the attractive, the handsome, <laughs> the suave, the bon vivant, debonair, Larry Bubbles Brown. Hi, Larry. Bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, Larry Bubbles Brown. We won't hear from him next week because we're not going to be on on Friday next week. We're going to take two days off for Thanksgiving. In fact, all of GabNet is, and uh, what you can do is just listen to whatever I throw up here. Maybe I'll put porn. I, I've always always thought about that, about, about uh, getting my extensive porn library and just stripping the pictures away and just playing the audio. Uh, and I wonder if I could get in trouble for that. I wonder if that's one way I, I could get demonetized or, or whatever that is all about. Anyway, listen, it's time to... Um, admit people into our into our gathering here and uh, get some talk going if possible uh, and uh, let me see here let me go to the panel there they go I, yeah I, I think I'm a few things uh, at the beginning of the show I forgot to turn on the live but I got it on just in time for us to go on the air so here we are hello hello, hello everyone hello Jeff hello Josh uh, Hello. How was your How was your trip? Yeah, it was pretty good. Pretty good. And, where, and, and you go? well, yeah. Where did you go? You usually go to some place historical, don't you? Uh, well, we usually do. Yeah, we uh we went to Little Rock, Arkansas. What What hmm. you wanted to visit segregation? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, a little bit. We uh we went to the Clinton Presidential Library. Really? Yeah, okay. And then we went to the Park Services uh, Center, and we took a tour of the neighborhood and the uh, Little Rock's uh, Central High School, where the where George uh, segregation riots broke out in 57 did, when did, Eisenhower sent in the uh, troops, 101st right. Airborne. And, did, and wasn't, that, was day, it, wasn't that also, was, was that where George Wallace also showed up? He, where did he show up? No, that was uh, in Alabama, but uh, that is where the governor of Arkansas, that Orville uh, Faubus, uh, he sent the state National Guard in to to uh, block the black students from entering after the Supreme Court, you know, said that they had to in Brown v. Uh, Brown v. Board of Education. He sent in the National Guard to stop them, so Eisenhower sent in the regular army to throw the national guard to the side and keep the peace but uh, it wasn't easy but it wasn't easy no so and then the last day we took a ride down to a town called hope arkansas Mm -hmm. which is where president clinton was born and lived the first few years and we took a tour of his boyhood home well now how's the library the library is pretty good it's very nice um it's uh you know uh um really well done uh we took uh, we went uh, twice we went once on our own and just kind of walked through and then we went the next day and took kind of the tour that they'll give you um which is a little bit more personalized uh that was very good um it has you know some neat stuff and it's uh you know especially for like president clinton for example it's it's much different than like if I'd have went to, you know, Eisenhower or Kennedy's or someone, you know, because the, the one for President Clinton, um, I was alive, you know, during the time. So I have a lot of memory of it. Mm-hmm. I was very, uh, I don't say involved because I was just a little bit too young to vote. But, uh, you know, I really liked President Clinton, uh, you know, at the time. And, you know, I just, just someone I, you know, I just remember all the people that are in those pictures, you know, uh, you know, James Carville and. 
uh, Stephanopoulos and Paul Begala and, you know, Dee Dee Myers and all, you know, I mean, so it's just, uh, you know, it's just kind of. Well, yeah, yeah. How, uh, it, you know, what gets me is that uh, most most presidents do have presidential libraries. I think all of them do, actually. Oh, they do now, right. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, Obama is building his where, in Chicago, or is it even open yet? No. Uh, it's not open yet. It's uh, I think they just broke ground not that long ago, so it'll probably be another, probably at least another yeah. year or two. Now, have we heard anything at all about the Trump library? I do not think so. Um, you know, because he has to raise money for that, so I don't know what the deal with that will be, you know, because the, the libraries are not paid for by the government. They are all foundations mm -hmm. and then there is always a wing of the library that is run by NARA, the National Archives and Records Administration and that part is paid for by the government but that is literally just a section of it or a little addition or something like well, that. Well, if they started the if they started a Trump uh, um, library uh, yeah. I would imagine it would be in the basement of Mar-a-Lago where Probably, all the documents yeah. if are. If they were to have a library, ar yeah, the archives, they'll have to get the, the papers back first. <laughs> right. yeah, you, know, you can only archive something if you have if it. If you have it, yeah. Yes, yeah. correct. And then, you know, Obama's is going to be sort of the first one that's going to be, like, uh, hugely digital. I mean, they will have the paper copies, but, like, you know, starting in his era, uh, everything is going to be big time digital you know so um they did make a point at the clinton library to ex on the tour to explain how that system works to explain what the law is mm -hmm. to explain why the laws came about a lot of them were because of nixon mm -hmm. um and him not wanting to hand over a lot of documents uh during his presidency and after yeah and you know they made a Nonpartisan sort of comment that because the National Archives and Presidential Records have been in the news lately, <laughs> we would like to explain to you how this building came about, what the law is, and who paid for it. You know, they were very clear. You know, everything you see here, you did not pay for. The government paid for none of this. This is all private money. That building right over there that you can see out the window was built by that foundation, handed over to the archives, here are the keys, and they completely run it now. You know, the only money that the government puts into this now is those security guards over there who work for the archives and the archivists who staff the building. That is it. Right. Well, Everything else is private money. When they do, yeah, and but, your but what I'm saying is when they do a library, are they required uh, to uh, are they? Oops, excuse me. I'm clumsy today. Are they required to uh, make sure that there is an area that the archives can have their yeah, own? Yeah, little... pretty much. Yeah. I think if they were to refuse, that it would probably just end up defaulting to going to the National Archives and Records Administration building, which is in Washington D.C. Um where they keep a lot of federal records, it would probably just end up there, mm -hmm. you know, and with no fanfare or anything. Um, but uh, but it's very nice. It's very well done. It's very nice mm -hmm. looking, you know, good looking building, nice property. It's right on the river there in Arkansas. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they have a replica. I mean, a full scale, 100% accurate replica of the Oval Office. Uh, I think every, you know, every they, one of the libraries has that. I mean, the Nixon Library do. does. Yeah. yeah, and then they all have something else that's sort of unique. Uh, you know, like the Reagan Library has a, a, a retired Air Force One, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so the Clinton Library in the lobby has uh, one of President Clinton's uh, limousines, mm -hmm. um, which uh, right after he left office, they, they bought some new ones. So, you know, they got to find somewhere to put the old ones so you know one of those went to the clinton library for example oh, that's nice um you know just little stuff like that you know what i mean and 
Mm. And, you know, they have some nice memorabilia, like original campaign signs and T-shirts like they sold in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, well, it sounds know, like you had a nice time. That's a, yeah, that's a nice thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and we'll, and we'll get into it later, I'm sure. But, you know, I remember I texted Patrick and Kevin when I was there, and I just said, you know, I had a little bit of a walking through there and seeing all those pictures of the of a youthful Clinton, uh, both Hillary and you know Bill Clinton, mm-hmm. and, and I just said it. It's time for Democrats to move the fuck on from what they've had, and it sounds like maybe they are, you know. Yeah. Because you know, I just said you know I'm not against any of these people, but I. I just see all these pictures, and then I see the electoral map that is hanging up, and Clinton whooped them both times, you know, <laughs> you know, and and I'm like they they got to find somebody like that. Yeah. I mean, they, I don't know who that is, but they've got to find someone like that. Yeah. In Hel- my opinion. Hello to Bree, who has joined us from uh, Malaysia. Uh, and what are those lights up above? They kind of kind of. Uh, Making you wobble in and out a little bit, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's much better. That's much better. Yeah. Um, I do have a request, Alex. I was wondering if you could put the meeting ID in the YouTube description. What do you mean the meeting ID in the YouTube description? Well, the the way that I get in here is I I go on my tab, one of my tablets, and I push the zoom, and it pops up. Mm-hmm. And it's the Zoom on this tablet, but I'd rather join on my iPad. But well, if you if you simply go to the um, the video that we're now you know that, that's running um, at the at the very bottom of it. Well, wait a minute, I usually have it there. It's usually there, huh? I have I I actually put uh, the um, uh, what do you call the it? I, I put the link in there, but I guess it's not there right, right now. And, and instead of the link, all mm-hmm. I, most people, if they're familiar with Zoom, you only need the meeting ID. You don't need the link because we use different gadgets. So the gadget I'm looking at the link on mm-hmm. may not be the gadget I want to use to join. Yeah, but it's so much so, easier if I do the HTTP and then that just immediately gets them there. You know, uh, yeah. if, if I go to, right. let's see here, where, where let me, me look, it, let me look, let me look I, here. I had to use three devices to get online. Uh, you know something it, uh, I'm looking to see and I didn't, uh, well, wow. I didn't do it. Anyway. Oh, okay. Hold on yeah, a second. That's just a request. You Speaking know, of, um, you know, presidents, I, mm-hmm. I, um, I don't know. I had lunch with Bill Clinton. I don't know if I mentioned that. And I've had lunch with Hillary Clinton as well. Um, yeah. You know, historically. And I wrote a book about Bill Clinton and George Bush. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I, I agree that um, we it's time to move on. And I, I, I wonder... I, I was talking to a taxi driver the other day. We have an election here today and tomorrow. Uh, they've made it. They put the uh, the vote on the weekend, and they've made it a public holiday. Mm-hmm. Things that I know in the U.S. we talked about, but we never got accomplished. Mm-hmm. They do it here, uh, and, and so the um, the uh, it, 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 I was talking to a taxi driver, and I told him. Well, I asked him who he was voting for, and you know, he didn't really tell me. But we talked about things, and I said, "Well, you know, Donald Trump is back." in the in the states and he's he called him something i hadn't heard before mm-hmm. he called him donald trumpet trumpet donald which trumpet? is appropriate because he's always tooting his own horn <laughs> <laughs> okay all right yeah uh hold on a second i'm trying to i'm trying to find so oh i know what i'm gotta do here hold on a second uh, i gotta find the there we go there we go okay i'm putting it up now this really bothered me that I have I, I somehow stopped doing it for some reason without knowing that I stopped doing no I don't want that well and for me for me and I don't know if for others yeah I just need the numbers I don't need a link wait a minute hold on a second and it because I was watching I was watching on my phone and then mm-hmm. I was watching on my iPad and mm-hmm. then it went to, you know, call in time. I'm like, okay, well, I'm watching on the iPad, but I want to switch over, but I don't want to miss anything while I'm switching. Yeah. So I had to bring out another tablet and then go to the GabNet site. But 
It was all complicated. No. If I just had the number, I'd type it in. Mm-hmm. I'm having trouble here. Eh, Facebook notice. Here we and go. And one day, you know, I think I've asked you to do a video mm -hmm. behind the scenes of Gabnet where you show how you use OBS and how how you make it happen, how you get it, how you get the audio to tune in, all those things. Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not really a very, uh, I, I don't know that I want to do that because I don't know if there's that much to really show. You know, I don't know if it would well, be interesting to people. Uh, so, uh, well, let me see. Zoom there are people in. who want to do it. They want to do what you're doing, but they don't know how. Look, like, I don't know. Well, why should I? Why should I give them a lesson? <laughs> let me YouTube, see here. Everybody. Let me let me see here. Let me go here now to the this and see if it uh, if it. You were uh, also talking, Alex, about a busker. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a busker here, and she calls herself Buteri Busker, which means the Princess Busker. Mm -hmm. Um. Similar to you, but she, you know she gets thousands of hits. She plays guitar and sings. She's very good. Yeah, but I mean, I'm I don't sing and I don't play the guitar and I don't play the violin. There's this one girl who plays the violin, who literally gets you know sometimes yeah, tens of thousands of, of people viewing her, over a million, you know. Mm -hmm. And I you know I, I I'm not cute, you know. I don't have big tits. I, I, well, I do have big tits actually. Um, not as big as um, uh, Alan's, but you know, I'm jealous, Alan. Anyway, uh, it, it, but, but you know, I mean, it, it, it's two, two, it, entirely different thing, you know. So I mean, you know, but I mean, if I put up a video on how to do this using OBS, I would be one of ten thousand people who show people online how to use OBS. Yeah, but you, you also go to tune in, and you, you have a lot of things. Yeah, but I know it's it, quite it, complicated. It's not really complicated. Uh, each of those things I did one at a time. I look, I I just had something very uncomplicated here to put the link, which is now up under the live picture. Okay. Uh, took me a little while. That's what I was doing here, folks. Uh, and uh, you know it. Uh, I. I, I I forgot to do that a couple of days ago. I guess I didn't do it, or I changed it, or or whatever, and I never realized it still wasn't there. But I always had it listed down there, a link. Literally, you could click on and get to uh, the Zoom address. So since I did that, folks, start using it. Okay, all right, yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, so um, how you doing, Alan? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm just uh, relaxing. You're relaxing. You you left us last night abruptly. I, what happened? I waved. Yeah, I got a you, phone call and I had to take it and I wasn't going to get back on, so I waved. Yeah, goodbye. I noticed you waved and then you you know I mean I didn't want to interrupt just to say goodbye. So. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but uh, anyway, so now, folks, since there is an easy way to call, you just go over to the uh, video and you just click on the link. It says Zoom us at, and then there's a link. Click on that, and that'll take you right there. I don't think you even have to have uh, Zoom on your machine. I think it just automatically does it. So. Yeah, it'll just open up a web browser. Huh? Unless you have it. Yeah, it'll open up a web browser, it, and yeah. you know, and then you become part of the system panel. So. Uh, call us but thank you for letting me know about that uh, because it, it was always up there and I just yeah. you know after a while you just assume it was always up there because all you're doing is repeating yeah. what you did the day before so anyway you know it makes it easier for people to join me well yeah I mean I I don't want them to have to go to if, if you're using especially like an iPhone or you're using an iPad to have to, to have to go to Gabnet and then click on stuff is kind of difficult but if all you have to do is click on the link in the video then that's a way of, of getting in touch with us and putting us on you know yep. anyway so back to uh, so here here's what I was thinking uh, it, it all comes into kind of flows into the discussion we were having about presidential libraries mm -hmm. and documents mm -hmm. and documents that you know I mean, as I said, if Trump's going to have a presidential library, he should just do it in the basement of Mar-a-Lago because that's where all the uh, archives are, 
you know. Well, yeah, then he, he then he could charge, you know, twelve dollars for adults and seven dollars for children to walk by and you know look at him and look at him. <laughs> that would just yeah. Right so up his, his, uh, his library, you probably have one book. And two pages would have print in it, and the other 400 would have nothing in it. Well, it'd be a lot. Well, that would be quite a few copies of Hustler, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, plus a private foundation is a you know, half-decent way to launder money. So, I mean. <laughs> well, it, it, I do really think... Surprised that, he hadn't built one yet. <laughs> do you think that all this money they've been sending him, you know, his, his minions been yeah. sending him, do you really think he puts it in a bank account that says funds for running for office or whatever? No. Or do you think it. he just spends it like any other money that comes I mean, in? I would imagine that there's a fair amount of it that's not exactly, you know, by the book. I mean, Phil, if I had to guess. Do you think, hmm? yeah, I mean, proof, do you think Trump has read a book? Like, I mean, from start to finish, has he read a book? Well, I'm sure he had to in high school. Uh, you really? You sure you didn't get the cliff notes? Well, <laughs> that that's possible too. But I'm saying that he, at least we assume he had to. Uh, I you know I don't know that reading books necessarily makes him uninformed. You know I think you can be a totally informed but it person does tell and a lot never about your attention span. Well, no, what it what it is is. You know I'm not a big reader. I had, haven't done a lot of re reading in my time. Okay. I, I have read books on history and things like that because that kind of thing interests me. Uh, some biographies, I enjoy biographies. But, uh, I, you know, I've never been that big on reading books. Marjorie, you know, has constantly got a book that she's reading, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've just never been that way. Uh, I'm not stupid, you know, because I am... I, I am very curious about the world around me and the way things go and what has happened mm. historically and so on. So m my um, knowledge comes really from stuff that I, I see visually, like documentaries. I, I, I chew up documentaries like they were, you know, jujubes. I mean, it just, I really love documentaries. So um, I don't think you have to be a well-read individual to be an informed individual. I think there are a lot of other ways to get information these days. But I don't think he goes to any of those. I don't think it's ever, ever even, he's never even been curious about anything. You know? At least I don't get that feeling. I think feeling. he will get the nomination. I don't think he's going to get the nomination. I, I, think I? The, I think the Republican Party has had it with him. You know? They gave him his shot to try and, and to try and help them win an election, and he couldn't do it. He couldn't pull it out, and they don't. I don't think they want to back him this time. Well, well, a, a lot of the people I hear, you know, they'll, they'll you see them in the interviews, and they'll say, "Well, how do you feel?" And they're like, "Well, we got to move on." You think that's the past? And they say, "But, but if he gets a nomination, well, if he gets a nomination, I'll support him." Well, yeah, they, but so that's that's that's, that's they, the Republicans. You know, they say if if, uh, if my well, I think we're the same way. The Democrats, you know, if some, I may, they may nominate somebody I don't like, but I'm going to support him because I'm not going to support the goddamn Republican, you know. My my guess is unless they unless the Republicans say Ron DeSantis, you're the guy, and you're it, that then. But if five or six or seven come up there, Trump only needs 30, 35 percent, which he's got solid for the rest of his life. He'll have thirty percent, no matter what he does. He'll take it. Well, I don't think that Ron DeSantis is necessarily a lock either. You know, I mean, let's face it. He's a known quantity in Florida, but the rest of the country, he's not that well known. And when they see him, they may not like him. Have no idea. You know, what goes on in Florida is not what the rest of the country is thinking, you know. Uh, and, and so I don't know that Ron DeSantis has that big a shot. But the question is now, today, Merrick Garland said that he was going to appoint a, appoint a special counsel uh, to look into all the information they have and to vet it and to say whether charges should be made against our former president. 
And everybody seems to think that the, the Mar-a-Lago situation with all the papers is going to be a slam dunk, that a special counsel is just going to say, yeah, that was wrong, that was bad. January 6th may take a lot longer for him to come to a conclusion. But uh, I think Garland's looking to, to I, mean, I think he wanted to throw the book at uh, Trump, but he didn't want to do it in a way that looked partisan. So he figured that the special counsel would solve that problem. So what do you think, uh, Josh? Yeah, in a case like that, I mean, the, the special counsel is really the, the way to go. I mean, it's sort of their only option, you know, um, in most cases. The, the document issue is, is what's going to, you know, cause him trouble um, because the you know, anything on January 6th, for example, is relatively open to your own personal interpretation, right? You know, as a as a as an individual person, but something like the document situation is much more clearly defined in the law. You know, well, and, in the and past, he, anybody who has taken those documents yes, uh, right. has wound up spending sufficient time in prison. Correct. Yes. And, and I don't I don't know that, you know, um, Trump's never going to go to jail, but, you know, there is a good chance, you know, he could have some sort of could we Could we maybe hope you know, for an ankle? Could, could we maybe hope for an ankle bracelet? Well, I mean, you know, that's possible. I mean, that's what I'm saying. You know, someone like him would end up getting, you know, some sort of, you know, two year suspended sentence house arrest type of garbage for something like that which is totally not what everyone else that's done those sorts yeah. of things has gotten okay so i'm not saying that that's what i would do mm -hmm. but I, i'm just saying that you know i would personally be overwhelmingly shocked if we ever watched footage of him surrendering himself for his eight month term in jail or something i mean you know that that'll never happen <laughs> yeah. Yes, Alan. It probably should, but it, I, uh, I think pure torture to him would be gold-plated ankle bracelet, not solid gold. <laughs> but but the 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 document deal is pretty clearly defined. Um, it is the law. There is almost no way to mistakenly break it. Um, that sort of reasoning would perhaps hold up if you had a document or two, right? Mm -hmm. um, it is not going to hold up when you had hundreds mm -hmm. that you were informed that you had multiple times in writing. Mm -hmm. I think we are all aware that current presidents, sitting presidents, are literally surrounded by lawyers. Um, they absolutely can barely brush up against anyone who works in that building who is not a lawyer, right? I mean, it is impossible not to have known. And again, and like I said, well, I mean, my question our is, is clear when you leave. This is the deal. Mm -hmm. you know? So this is how I mean, this is how it's done. Yes, I mean, these they are told. His lawyers are told. They have the meetings. There's an outgoing. There's a transition. There's a. Well, the question it's, is, it's just, I I, I want to no know. What, I would like to ask the bigger question: What he was planning on doing with these documents? Well, he may never know that because he obviously will have the right to never say. You know, he doesn't have to testify or say anything. So we will, and if he did, he wouldn't tell the truth anyway. So we will likely never know. Because I don't know that they have any proof of what he had. But that's the good news about, I think, that particular case is that it doesn't matter if you had some, you know, malintent for them later on down the road. Just having them was illegal. And there is no ignorance that can be pleaded when the evidence is clear that he was informed at multiple occasions that he had them and that he had to give them back and he would give a few back and say that was all of them and then they you know and it went they, then they found more the and so obviously you know, he I mean, was yeah. i mean it's it, this is what i'm saying i mean you can't it's like i mean it's like a 
speeding ticket, for example, 65 and a 45, where you could say, oh, I didn't know the speed limit was 45, you know, but it was. Well, you know? it's, the old, it's the old ignorance of the law is no excuse. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 not going to work. And, and I guess maybe that analogy is not good. But if you I don't that think, you good, know, I don't. It would be like, but you've been stopped three times this week. See, but <laughs> I never had the feeling while he was president that uh, that he really truly understood the limits of the power of the presidency. It almost seems like he believed that he became president. Now, anything he wanted to do, he could do. You know? Sure, I, I don't think that he has an Imperial understanding of it at all. What were you going to say, Bree? <clears throat> well, there, there are a lot of researchers who have written on, but the two they all say is imperial presidency and imperiled presidency. So the imperiled presidency was Carter. The imperial presidency was Reagan, and so Trump was supreme imperial president. Supreme imperial president. No, but it just seems like he felt, uh, "Hey, I'm president. I can just snap my fingers, and uh, people yes. have to do whatever I say." And he didn't realize that he has to follow by certain rules and regulations as well as presidents. Well, but Alex, he never followed them in his own personal life and in his business life. He never followed so. Why would he start following? Well, we're finding out when he had actual powers. We're finding out now that yeah. his his actual powers are you know were pretty terrible. You know, I mean he's he, 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 just it's just amazing that there's anybody in this country knowing his record for lying and doing things that are wrong and and one thing and another that there's anybody in this country who even thinks this guy is a good idea. You know, I mean, hey, I mean, I, I, under, I would understand it if people said they wanted to, Ted Cruz. You know, I hate Ted Cruz. He's a disgusting, disgusting, vile, pernicious individual. But at least he's not a Trump. You know, <laughs> I mean, how anybody could follow a Donald Trump is beyond me. Just beyond me. Well, I've, I've told you before, I mean, it, it's the idea of. He, you know, he, he had the appearance of getting things done, and he has the appearance. He talks he, in moments. He talks strong, and you just have to forget what he said ten minutes ago. And well, thanks yeah, to but every you time know, he, news soundbite. Anytime he talks about things he's done, he lies about those. Yeah. You know, I mean, what was it's it the other like day? He's it to the man. He said that yeah. Well, they talk about the people who lost that I came out for, but how about the people I came out for that won? The over 200 of them. Well, in most, in all of those situations, these were people who were a slam dunk because they were already in office. They were simply running to be reelected and they were in Republican territory. So he was taking credit for slam dunks. But the ones that were the hard ones, he didn't, it, it, you know, sure. I mean, how's, how's Dr. Oz working out for you, you know? How, how's uh, Walker doing for you? How's uh, anyone? How's Carrie Lake? Is she governor right now? No, you know. Mm -hmm. But but the way in which he lies about everything, he likes to take credit for stuff he never even did. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. It's just amazing. And yeah, I, yeah, I mean, it's he, yeah. You know, his open uh, defiance of you know really what is going to be end up, you know, being probably proved to be, it's a fairly clear law. I mean, you know, the possession of, you know, government documents is not much open to interpretation. Like you said, especially when you have the volume that he had and, you know, the, uh, the period of time, you know, again, it's not like they found, you know, one folded up, you know, document in a briefcase or something on your way out the door. I mean, that's, a, you know, you can probably still get in trouble for that, but that's a totally different situation mm -hmm. than, you know, what we see. I mean, we, and we only have what evidence has been released. We don't even have evidence that hasn't been released, right? And I'm, right. I'm fairly certain there's not some big time evidence out there that exonerates him completely, you know? If there was, they probably wouldn't have appointed a special counsel today. Well, right? why, why, why do you think Merrick Garland asked for a special counsel? Because he just wanted to make sure that he didn't get all the heat on this deal, and that. The, well, yeah, I mean that's that's the only way to go, and be able to avoid 
uh, not even the appearance of partisanship, but actual partisanship. You know, it's 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 the way to go. It's 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 handing it over to someone, and then saying we will swallow whatever this person says, just like they did with you know Mueller or with others before that in mm-hmm. other cases. You know, um, it's the only way. I mean, because he's going to get super duper hammered even for doing this, which is stupid, but that's the way it works, right? Mm-hmm. But how hammered would he be getting if he came out today and said, I indicted Trump, right? I mean, you know, uh, I mean, you know, it, it's... You I, know, I, think, be... I think he's going to get heat either way. Correct. You know, yeah. I mean... The Republicans are going to, like, I saw what Garland was in front of a a committee to, I think, explain a lot of things. And Ted Cruz was there just trying to pillory him, you know? Yeah, right. I mean, with stupidity, right. Yeah. But, you know, and and, and, but this is the only way he can avoid that getting worse and maybe working in the minds of, you know, voters who are not as well informed as others. Well, you know, the thing is that in the in their entire um, attitude, um, the Republicans uh, about what they're going to do now that they have Congress, but you know, they don't. They only have Congress. They're going to only have them by about three or five Congress people, right? And yeah. that's not the kind of majority you need to get stuff done in Congress. Okay, right. So, but. Uh, they say they're going to, you know what we're going to do now? We're going to go after the DOJ. We're going to have an investigation in the Department of Justice. Come on. You know, why? I mean, yes. You know, I they, mean, look, oh, and the here's I, the one they want to, they want to, they want to uh, investigate uh, Anthony Fauci. Yeah. What yeah. for? Saving our lives? I mean, look. At the end of the day, I guess, I mean, look, this is not really good for America, so try to understand how I'm saying this, but Mm -hmm. I hope that's exactly what they do. I hope they have 50 fucking investigations and hearings on Hunter Biden. I hope they investigate Fauci and Hunter Biden. I hope they try to impeach five or six cabinet officers. I, I really do, because that'll just... It's they're just pouring gas all over themselves, and they're already on fire. So just keep fucking going. <laughs> you know? Well, I don't know. You know, Hunter Biden. Let's say they they've always had this hard on for Hunter Biden. Okay, mm-hmm. we're going to get Hunter Biden if we have a chance. We're going. And why do they want to get him? Only because he's Biden's son. You know, I mean, there's nothing right, there that they can get on Biden. I mean, although they they're talking about like, him wanting to impeach him too. Yeah, I mean, they keep acting like that's some sort of big scandal that's been ignored, and, man, you should really know about this and everything. And it's like, folks, we do know about it. It's already been reported, widely reported in the news, that there is a grand jury convened on his personal and tax affairs. It's not done yet. It is highly likely that he will be charged with some crimes, the least of which is likely to be tax evasion, which, by the way, people do go to prison for. So there is a well. They say there's one fair they, chance. There's one he's thing. Gonna have big trouble. They say there's one thing you don't want to fuck with, and that's the IRS. Yeah. You know they're relentless. So, I mean, they're so, relentless. So just let that do its work. You don't need. Well, you know to, the mean, thing is, he felt that by becoming president, this made him immune to all the stuff that was going to happen to him. If he had never won that election back when, uh, he probably may be in jail right now, because I mean there were a lot of people ready to come after him for various things, yeah. and the only thing I mean, that slowed it down was him becoming president. And now, why did why is it he has said he's going to run for president two years before the election? Why? Yeah, because it's all about him. No. He wants wants the exposure. No, he doesn't want the exposure. He wants the protection that he thinks it's going to afford him. Hey, I'm running for president. You don't want to come after me right now. Think again, pal, because I don't think Merrick Garland's going to take that into account. Yeah, I mean, you know, with, with, for all their crying and moaning about inflation and, you know, all this you know, crime, 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 and all this other stuff. Fine, if that's their platform, okay. I mean, that's fair enough, right? That's fine. 
So the election is over, and the only thing they've talked about since the election is the things that we just talked about, which was Hunter Biden and money to Ukraine and you know, Anthony Fauci, which is like so yesterday's news. You know, I mean, but what did Anthony well, Fauci do? Well, what did he well, do? Nothing, right, but I'm just saying, but. Where's your Where's your bill to fix inflation? Where's your plan to fix crime? Where's your So, they stood up there and had a press conference for uh, forty five minutes or an hour, and I watched most of it on C SPAN. It played right here, and I heard you know Marjorie Taylor Greene and all the people. They didn't say anything about crime. They didn't say anything about inflation. They didn't say anything about anything except money to Ukraine, Hunter Biden, Anthony Fauci, uh, impeach the border, uh, Homeland Security guy. Do, 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 I mean. DOJ, just keep going. Just the, keep going. DOJ, investigate right. the DOJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, look at all the unfair trials that were given all across the country to January 6 rioters, which Congress has no authority to do, by the way. Um, but, you know, totally besides the point. Yeah. I mean, it, it's good. Just keep going. Just keep going. So the same independent voters that went to the polls and went, eh, I don't think so. In a Larry David moment, when it came to voting for Republicans, we'll do the same damn thing next time. That's completely fine with me. Speaking of Larry David, um, he's in trouble. But uh, we'll <laughs> talk about that in a second. Before we go further, I always, I, we used to have a feature on this program that's called, What is Bree Eating? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it seems very obvious. Yeah, what is that now? This is, just lower it so we can see the name of the brand there. San Carlo... Uh, Vita Bojona, what what is that? What is Vita Bojona or Bojona or? Wait a minute, your mic isn't on. Your mic isn't on, Bree. Bree, your mic isn't on. Oh, <laughs> yeah. sorry. Yeah, because I was crunching the chips. Yeah, what? what? Uh, it's called the same color. It's La Vita e Bojona. Mm-hmm. The life is good. Oh, life is good. Oh, okay. All right. And what are those? Just it's, chips? Uh, those are just potato chips. Pink, lime and pink pepper flavored potato chips. Mm. Yeah. That sounds pretty uh, good. Is, uh, yeah. Mm. I think they're Italian. I mean, well, but you never know, right? The uh, made in Gorilla Malaysia. Pasta was sued. Huh? Gorilla pasta was sued for. No, this one is manufactured in Italy. So it is Italian. Really? But Gorilla Pasta in the States was uh, sued for saying they were Italy's number one pasta, but they're made in Iowa or something. <laughs> uh. Well, I love Barilla because Barilla, you know, I like uh, I like al dente for spaghetti. And it's pretty hard to get it really soft. Barilla is, will, will, even if you cook it a lot, will still come out al dente. I ate at Gordon Ramsay last week. I had the Hell's Kitchen burger. Nah, it was okay. He's supposed to be here this next next week. What's he doing? A documentary about the area? Well, he has this new restaurant. Oh, I see. Where is it? I mean, what city? It's here in KL. Just just about a kilometer that way. But we never heard of that town. He's opening up a restaurant there. In Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Oh, Kuala Lumpur. That's what I asked you. I didn't. Uh, did you say Kuala yeah. Lumpur? I didn't hear you say it. KL. Yeah. We just say KL here. Nobody says oh, the whole name. KL. <laughs> okay, KL. Yeah. Um, but uh, so you know. So uh, Alan. Yeah. Yeah. What's new? You still? You still look like you're a little sick. No, I. Uh, I'm okay. I, I mean, I, I took my hat off, but lighting sucks. I ordered a backlight, you know, that, that's now on back order to, to kind of shine light towards me. Phil says I would look more. What natural. do you mean a backlight? That's a front light. A front light. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> backlight. 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 Would... It's gonna be. It's gonna be behind the monitor, but shining this way to me, not behind the monitor, but like on top of it. Well, I just so, use I use video lights here. You know. Yeah, that's what this is. It's a video light, and uh, but it's it's lengthwise. It's not one of those round lights. So, well, it's, uh, I, I I have one here and I have one here, and you know it does oh, pretty well, good. You got the room. I 
My office is pretty full. Well, I actually got a small one over here and a large one over here because when I bought this one, that was the only one available. Then they made these smaller ones, which are really quite compact. No, I'm actually feeling really good, actually. Uh, good. good. I'm about ready to have a cigar after the show. Really? First one in three weeks. Yeah, really. Yeah. Wow. I think I'm, I'm much having healthier right now, even though I didn't light it up. Yeah, and and uh, Jeff, things are very quiet at your house tonight. Isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> your wife and her her sister. Well, she had she has two sisters who were here. Okay, and one of them left. Gee, what are you talking so quietly for, Jeff? <laughs> well, because he's because he's pussy whipped. That's why. Yeah, well, that's right. That's right. And he's not so. He hasn't been drinking tonight. No, not too much. He looked, he looked like he was uh, a little water liquor last night. Well, I needed it last night. Oh well, God, well, they were they were like they were know, having a good time. They were having a good time. Yeah, well, you know, good as song. I said, when the when the get, gals get together, they tend to tip the oh, light yeah. fantastic. You know, oh, yeah. they get a little loopy. As then it they were. get the husband a couple drinks in him and say, "Drive us to the to the restaurant." And he gets stopped and arrested and oh, you know, geez. driving. So, oh, they, they, you, know, you know what they say about women. You can't live without them. You can't live with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we, a couple of weeks ago, a um, guy by the name of uh, 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 Ye, okay, formerly Kanye, mm -hmm. um, uh, managed to blow about a million and a half dollars in 24 hours which uh, was a, a nice little loss of money. But I'm wow. beginning to think that we're about ready to see somebody who's going to blow $44 billion by the name of Elon Musk yeah. and Twitter. Twitter is gone. I yeah. mean, that thing is... Um, what, what's Matadon he think? is the new one. What did what, 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 you say? Matadon, that's where everybody's going. Where everybody's selling what? No, everybody is going there. Matadon is rising as Twitter goes down. Matadon? I never heard of Matadon. Yeah. No, that's where everyone I know is going. Anybody heard of Matadon? No. It's an app on your phone, and they're gaining tens of thousands every minute. Matadon? How's that spelled? I guess it's like, uh, wasn't Matadon, wasn't that like a prehistoric word or something? I don't know. I mean, is it M-A-T-A-D-O-N? Yeah. Correct. Let me see here. Matadon. I'll, I'll look it up here. Mad. So they're going to allow all the uh, good porn on Don? it like they do on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I even don't have, know. I don't even have a Twitter account. I don't know either. So. Let's see here. Well, now I have Mastodon. No. Uh, that was a bit. That was the closest it came Mastodon, up. Mastodon. That's it. Yeah, Mastodon. Sorry. Really, Mastodon? You mean Mastodon? Yeah. yeah. It's a okay. fairly direct replacement for Twitter. Once you're set up with Mastodon, you'll see a familiar feed with familiar features. You can follow people. It's a it's followed. a free and open source software for running self-hosted social networking services. <laughs> In other words, I could probably put that on my computer here. And then everybody could come on to my Twitter. That's basically what it is. The future is micro, niche, and nano. So you're well poised, Alex, because the future, they say, is 1,000 or around 1,000. That's about the limit. Uh, and they say in the future, that's all communities will be based around that because there's, um, there's some theory that says we can't, we can't maintain relationships beyond that or comprehend it. So there'll still be these mass ones, but the future is micro, nano, niche. Uh, and you're right there. R really? Hold on a second. Let me just uh, move this down here. Mm. So, okay. I, you know, I, I don't understand it, but uh, there we go. Hold on a second. Let me move this up here. There we go. I, I, I'll save it and look at it later, you know? Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, you... Excellent. I'd have you like, set, yeah, let me know what your hand set in some money? What? Have you have either one of you put some money in this? Money into this? Yeah. 
Alex just found out about it. Well, you don't put yeah. money into it. That's it's not for pay, is it? It's 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 free for the most part. Yeah. And Ooh. it looks like it's a, it's a free open source software for running self-hosted social networking services. So this isn't a competitive, let's see, it has micro blogging features similar to Twitter service, which are offered by a large oh. number of, and then it goes on, there's more stuff there. Well, I'll take a look I at it. I see the only, the only state so far there's a fiat is in Connecticut. You're okay. <laughs> no. Thank you. No, but anyway, so that's uh, you know that's interesting. It's it's fascinating, but that doesn't mean that they're going to take over where t Twitter left off. I mm -hmm. just think Twitter is going to kill itself, basically. Oh yeah, it already has. You know, I mean, I mean, I, you know, I was always against him doing what he did with Twitter anyway because I think it is a waste of his resources. You know, let's face it. The tax break this year. No, but you can't be all things to all people at all times. You know, you can't no. run a space program and then uh, and and then run a car company and then turn around and try at the same time to run a forty-four billion dollar investment and, in a social and networking. Five, five or six women with ten or fifteen children. Yeah. Well, that's the that's cheap. That's a full-time job in and of itself. That's the inexpensive <laughs> part. But I'm saying that. You know, I would rather. You know, I think what he's doing with space is terrific. I, I you know, I, 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 he's my hero where that's concerned. I think Tesla is something where I have to really give him credit because I went who, a few years ago, I went who's going to want an electric car? You know, because I had heard that this car was only a bunch of batteries stuck together, which it really was and still is. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I told you they'd be good. Huh? Well, we can go back and check the records. Alex, <laughs> but I'm always telling you about these things that they <laughs> you just go. I remember when I said there was this thing called Zoom, and you were sure Skype was going to be it. Well, no Skype. Skype look, no, needed. no, Skype was it at the time, you know. And Zoom, you know, the only time, reason Zoom made it was because COVID came along, and people wanted a a a accurate, cheap because you could do 40 minutes for free, okay cheap way of talking with all their friends and getting all their friends together and then people found out like if they had a symphony orchestra they got everybody from the symphony orchestra together to play instruments all at the same time and did some great zoom stuff but it, it somehow uh it, it they were never able to catch up um skype was never able to catch up there was just no way to do it once that started they could have been there. They could have been the organization that people went to during COVID, but uh, they they didn't set themselves up to be. So I mean, they blew it. They really blew it. Which is strange. It takes money and it takes effort. What'd you say? It takes money and effort to do something. Oh yeah, absolutely. No, but I mean, hey, Skype was Microsoft. They don't have money. You know, it's just they didn't have the imagination. Okay. That's very yeah. good you know and Although bill gates you know predicted the virus so why couldn't he have predicted that skype would be more useful well you know you know <laughs> yeah. something and i i don't company. i don't think he has cared for one moment about microsoft since he left it you know yeah you're right i i don't think that he cares whether skype makes it or not you know just as long as they keep putting money in his bank account that's all he cares about you know uh, I think he's got enough money. Yeah, I think he got tired of that. He went on to other things, you know, and uh, and 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 it has turned out to be a fairly decent human being in the process. Sure. You know, he not bad for a Republican, right? Yeah. Well, whoever thought that we would say, "Hey, you know, he's doing some nice stuff," and yeah. we go, "But you know that Steve Jobs was a selfish prick." <laughs> An know? asshole to work for, too. I understand. Is, I would imagine he was a terror to work for. Yes. Yeah. I had friends of mine that worked for Apple while he was in power. And he'd come into a meeting and something was a little off, and he'd chew everybody out, name people by names, tell them to get the F out, you know, and just, you know, and then uh, say, you know, and then, you know, later on that day, he'd call them in their office and say, we need to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting so we can solve the problems. 
instead of going into the meeting and saying, we got a little problem, let's fix it. Yeah. You well, know, people feared him. The, I don't think he was that great a human being. I mean, when you, you, when you look at look at look at what Gates has done with his money, you know. Well, he wasn't he wasn't the brains behind Apple. He was the brains behind the business side. He wasn't the brains behind the the electronic side. That was Steve Wozniak. No, I'll I'll I'm going to give him more credit than that. Steve Wozniak was only with them until they put out the uh, the Mac. Lisa. The Macintosh. The Mac or the Lisa or something, yeah. Yeah, no, the Mac. Uh, I, I, I saw a documentary on He Apple. He was only involved in creating the first Apple. The mm. Apple II. Oh, he's, he's still making money, though. Well, yeah, of course. But I'm saying he was he, he left shortly after that, as a matter of fact. All right? Well, but once they, once they but, got but, money. But wait a minute. Here's where, here's where Steve Jobs was important. Steve Jobs was a visionary. He knew what he liked and what he wanted to have in his pocket. And then he said to all these people who he trusted, who were electronics people who knew how to do it, here's what I want, now go do it. I mean, the concept of the, of the iPhone was his concept. So, you know. so what, I, what I said was, was true. And that may, that may have been one of the most important inventions of the, of the 20th century. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or the 21st century. You have one in front of you, and I got one in front of me. But it, um, everybody's got I'm one. I'm about ready to buy an iPhone 14 next week. But um, Wozniak was the electronic genius. Jobs was the visionary. But, no, but no, but uh, once, Wozniak, once somebody, Wozniak once was only a, Wozniak was only a genius up to a point when they created that first computer. After I that. Think that's all you, that's all you needed, though, because now they're making money and they can hire people. And that, there is about as much is. similarity between the Macintosh I have sitting here on my desk and the original well, Mac. Probably. I mean, none of the architecture that was in the original Mac is in this. Okay. Well, so no, Wozniak that's was good in, the, in the beginning, but he needed a Steve Jobs who knew, who had vision, knew how it should look. I mean, Are he... Right? I Your can... iPhone has probably got the power of a supercomputer <clears throat> from 20 years ago. Oh yeah, absolutely. So you know, yeah. You know. But I mean, uh, <clears throat> yeah. I had one of the first computers uh, from uh, Mac or Apple. Mm -hmm. I don't even think it was called Mac. I, I, was, well, I remember Al Goldstein, who I was had had a business yeah. with. He had at his office the Mac too, or the yeah. Apple too. Uh, yeah. I couldn't yeah. use it because I couldn't figure out how to use it because you had to be able to program it and do all that kind of stuff. You know. That's what I had. Yeah. 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 Stick these little five and a half inch floppy disks into it. Little yeah, flop, flop, five, five, five and a half floppy disks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and but, you know the strangest thing is I was using it um, to start doing uh, engineering and design mm -hmm. projects. This, this is this is an Apple design. Microsoft didn't use mice. Apple was the first that, one. That was. wasn't invented by Apple. That what it was. It wasn't. No, it wasn't. The mouse wasn't uh, what, what, invented by Apple. No. Uh -uh. No, they mm -hmm. they bought the rights to it from uh, Oh. Oh god. Mean? I'm trying to think. Uh, but uh, I think they were the first ones that that sold it with a computer. I think they bought it from IBM if I'm not mistaken. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that and the graphical user interface. Maybe somebody can correct me on that if I'm wrong. I, I know I'm wrong. Yeah, I, 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 I used I, to know, but I don't now. Yeah. Well, the, so, or, the original IBM computer was what what all the clones, all the all the Microsoft clones are. Yeah. They sold the patent, and for the personal computer, and everybody everybody bought copies and. Dell computer. Michael Dell bought a copy of the of the, of the patent in order to use Oops. His, his equipment. I just looked, and I'm I should be running the theme about now. In fact, okay. well, have a good weekend, everybody. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, Jeff, thank you so much for being yes. with us this evening. I'll, I'll find out what company that was that came up with the mouse. But Jobs right. went down, said gave, he paid fifty thousand dollars for the mouse. Really? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, and thank you very much, uh, uh, Josh. I really appreciate your participation tonight. It has been informative as hell. Uh, and also, thank you, uh, uh, Alan. 
And uh, a big thanks to Bree uh, for especially enlightening us on Malaysian potato chips that are made in Italy. So anyway, <laughs> everybody give a big, a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the citizen panel. Uh, and uh, Jack Bishop will be having a citizen panel next. Let me just get rid of these guys here. We'll have, have, a, have a, having a, a festival of, of citizen panel next. Uh, do it in, doing it, boy, I'm just fried. We're doing it at uh, on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again Monday. We got a, a thing at 4 o'clock on, uh, on uh, Facebook. It's called the uh, pop-up. And then next Wednesday, the only show of next week. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, have a nice weekend, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>